Hello, future engineers and studies, viewers and students. Here is uh, another video about cables and their uniform loads. So, this is the original problem, but I extended it by asking these questions to make it comprehensive so that for any cable subjected to uniform loading upon the horizontal, you will be able to analyze it in a in various ways and I hope that through those various ways you are able to present it with those various ways to test if you are really understanding the concepts on cables so this is the original problem the cable AB supports a uniformly distributed load of 12 pounds per foot Determine the angles theta A, theta B, and the cable tension at A. So those are just the questions, but I extended it in this manner. Also show that the maximum sag occurs at the center and that the slope at the center on the cable is equal to the slope of the cord joining AB. So that is, if this is the imaginary cord joining AB, the tangent at the center on the cable will be parallel to that and that's why this is the maximum uh, sag at the center. So drawing the three body diagram, this is the horizontal tension at A, which is the tension at A cosine of theta A and the vertical component of tension, which is downward, is T sub A sine of theta A. So this is the cable at B, the tension is known to be 1200 pounds and it is inclined up to the right through this slope theta b. So the horizontal component of tension is 1200 cosine of theta b and by principle that 1000 cosine 200, 1200 cosine theta b is equal to this horizontal component of tension at a which is tension at a cosine of theta a. The vertical component of tension is 1200 sine of theta b. So, if we sum up moments about A, then we have counterclockwise positive 1200 sine theta B times 60 is equal to 1200 cosine theta B times 50 plus 12 times 60, which acts at the center, 12 times 60, and the moment arm is 30 feet half of 60. Simplifying by dividing everything by 1200, and transposing this to this term to the left. So we have 60 sine theta b minus 50 cosine theta b and the remaining term at the right side which is 12 times 60 times 30 divided by 1200 is equal to 18. So using your calculator because in this equation there's only one unknown which is theta b instead of replacing sine theta b by square root of 1 minus cosine square theta b, D and simplifying to form quadratic equation. Uh, you have your high tech calculator, so theta B is 53.13 degrees. Having found this, the horizontal component of tension, which is constant, is 1200 cosine of 53.13 degrees, and that is 720 pounds. Then the vertical component of tension, summation for SY, 1200 sine of 53.13 degrees equals VA plus 12 times 60. So V sub A is 240 pounds. Therefore, the tension at A is square root of horizontal component of tension square plus vertical component of tension square, 758.947 pounds. The slope can now be computed theta A, which is tangent of theta A is vertical component of 40 over 720, and that is one third Inverse tangent of one third is 18.45 degrees. Another way is equating the horizontal component of tension, which is H, and H is 720 pounds, and that is tension at A cosine of theta A, since we already computed tension at A. So cosine theta is 720 over 758.947, then inverse cosine of that ratio, 18.45 degrees also. Now to show that this is 
the the maximum sag at the center which is d sub n is indeed the maximum sag it's because by the general cable theorem we have a beam loaded with the same loading of 12 pounds per foot or in general w pounds per foot the maximum moment of course at the center or mid span since by symmetry the reaction shear would be wl over 2 wl over 2 this mx is by principle equal to summation moment at the center considering the load at the left and this force here so mx is equal to wl over 2 times l over 2 minus the moment of this load which is wl over 2 and the moment arm is l over 4 so mx is wl square over 8 so i want you to familiar with this although you can easily derive this in the same manner as this it is wl square over 8 the maximum moment in a simply supported beam loaded with uniform load is 1.8 wl squared so you can easily memorize that or you can easily derive that applying the general cable theorem that is the product of the horizontal component of tension and the distance from the point on the cable to the imaginary cord and since that point is at the center where maximum moment occurs so h times d sub n equals moment at the center of the beam which is loaded with the same uniform load which is wl square over 8 therefore the formula for h is wl square over 8 d sub n so having found this we can check that uh, we can use this to solve for d sub n and we can also use the equation to solve for d sub n later so vice versa so if you use this in computing d sub n then d sub n is the calculation is here h is w12 l square a 60 square over 80 sub n or so d sub n is 7.5 feet another way is once the equation of the cable is known which is this i will explain this further later the at at the center x is 30 feet so 30 square over 120 plus 30 over 3 is 17.5 so this is ym 17.5 and since this is the center then the vertical distance between a and b is 50 half of 50 is 25 so if the distance from this cord to this horizontal line here or the x-axis is 25 half of 50 25 minus 17.5 is equal to uh, d sub n which is 7.5 so it's also correct so let's continue if this is the origin first way of computing the equation of the cable with this as the origin and computing the length of the cable also with this as the origin the original equation is equation of the cable is quadratic equation y equals a x square plus b x plus c but because when x is zero y is zero so the constant c is zero so it reduces to this then the derivative y prime equals 2 ax plus b and we already know that at a or at the origin y prime is one third because we already solved the angle this is tangent of 18.45 degrees or one third so when x is zero y prime is tangent of 18.45 degrees or one third equate one third equals 2a times zero plus b so that means b is one third so the y prime therefore is 2ax plus b and b is one third so y prime is 2a when x is 60 feet y prime is tangent of 53.13 degrees or four thirds so 2a times 60 plus one third is equated to four thirds so that means a is one over 
120. Therefore, the equation of the cable is y equals a1 over 120 times x squared plus b one third of x. That's why when x is 30, we get ym, the distance from the x-axis to the point on the cable at the center is 17.5 feet. And we obtain the sub m as half of 50, 25 minus 17.5, which is equal to 7.5 feet. And another way to compute for the sub m is, as I said, using this formula here, h times the sub m equals moment maximum at the center, which is WL squared over 8. And I hope, especially for CE people, civil engineering students, you should not be able to forget this because it is just equating the maximum moment at the center of the beam of a simply supported beam loaded with uniform load, which is WL squared over 8, equated to the product of the horizontal component of tension and the distance from the point on the cable to the cord. So it's equated to maximum moment in the beam from the general cable theorem. So to continue, y prime is is x over 60 from here to a two times one over 20, so that's one over 60 times x plus b, which is one third. So y prime at 30. Another way. So let's show that the tangent at the tangent to the point on the cable at the center is parallel to this chord here, AB. So at 30, it is 30 over 60 plus one third. So one half plus one third is five six. And the slope of AB is indeed 50 over 60, which is five six. So, okay, that's what I'm, I mean with this uh, uh, showing that the center, the slope of the tangent at the center is equal to the slope of the magnetic chord AB. So the length of the cable, therefore, is integral from 0 to 60, square root of 1 plus y prime square. Remember the formula, which can be derived also dx. So with your calculator, the length of the cable is 79.26 feet, which is uh, correct because the straight line distance, for, in some, for example, the length of this cord is square root of 60 square plus 50 square. That is slightly lesser than 79.26. So the length of the cable is 79.26 feet. Then another way is when we locate the origin here so that the equation of the cable is as simple as y equals kx squared. So if this is the origin where the tangent is horizontal, let's find that. I'll call that xa. And the vertical distance of this point to a is ya because this is now the origin. So the equation is anticipated to be y equals kx squared when the origin is at the lowest point on the parabolic cable. So y prime is 2kx and when x is xa, the slope at a is one third. So one third equals 2kxa. Then at b, where x is xa plus 60, the slope is 4 thirds. So 4 thirds equals 2k and x is replaced by xa plus 60. Then expand 2k xa is 1 third, then plus 2k times 60, 120k. 4 thirds minus 1 third is 1. 1 over 120 is 1 over 20. Therefore, k is 1 over 20. And the equation of the cable is... Uh, and the value of x is 20 because from here 1 third equals 2 times 1 over 120 so that is 1 over 60 of xa xa therefore is 60 times 1 third so 20 20 feet that is 20 feet and ya is into this equation 1 over 120 times x a squared 20 squared so 10 thirds so therefore y is x squared over 120 or 1 over 120 x squared 
the derivative is 2x over 120 or x over 60. So another way of computing the length of the cable, length of cable AB, is the integral of square root of 1 plus y prime, which is x over 60 squared dx. And the limit should be from A, where A is, uh, where xA is 20, to B, where xB is 20 plus 60, so 80 feet. And using our calculator again, the length of the cable AB is the same as that 29.26 feet. So that's it for this video.